our next hormone is growth hormone. And this one is just like its name suggests, it makes you grow. We're going to look at this in three different aspects. First, we're going to look at the hormone itself, how you get it. Then we're going to look at how it makes you grow and how it supplies the energy for growing. So first of all, getting growth hormone. This is controlled by the hypothalamus. So your hypothalamus decides when to secrete growth hormone. It stimulates your anterior pituitary to secrete growth hormone. So getting the hormone involves your hypothalamus stimulating your anterior pituitary to secrete growth hormone. Now growth hormone has a synergistic partner. Remember back in chapter seven, we talked about PTH and calcitriol are synergistic? Same idea here. Remember synergistic is when two hormones are gonna work together. The synergistic partner of growth hormone is insulin-like growth factor, which we can abbreviate as IGF. So this stands for insulin-like growth factor. That comes from the liver. So once you have growth hormone, it goes to the liver and stimulates the liver to secrete IGF. Now you have growth hormone and IGF in the blood. So these are your two synergistic hormones. Now they're gonna do two things. So there's two actions of these hormones. One of the actions is to stimulate growth. So we're gonna stimulate growth by stimulating the epiphyseal plates of your bones. So remember these from chapter seven, that's that hyaline cartilage toward the ends of the bones where growth occurs. So you're gonna stimulate the epiphyseal plates of the bones. You're going to stimulate your muscles. They're going to get bigger and stronger. And you're gonna stimulate all cells of the body to do mitosis. So you have three ways that you stimulate growth. You stimulate the epiphyseal plates of the bones You stimulate the muscles to get bigger and stronger, and you stimulate mitosis in other cells of the body. Remember, the more cells you have, the bigger you are. Back in chapter four, when we talked about cells, we said how uh, like a 10-year-old has more cells than a one-year-old because a 10-year-old is bigger. All of this growth requires energy. So it takes energy to grow. So the other thing that these hormones do is supply you with that energy. So in order to make energy, you have to have fuel, such as glucose, and lipid so that your cells have something to make ATP. So growth hormone stimulates your liver to do glycogenolysis and release glucose into your blood and it stimulates your adipose to do lipolysis and release lipid into your blood. This provides the, a, the fuel for cells to make ATP so they have the energy to grow. So 
So the result of this is you get an increase in blood nutrient levels. This is called the diabetogenic effect. When a hormone is raising blood nutrient levels so that you can make more ATP, that is the diabetogenic effect. So growth hormone is controlled by the hypothalamus. It's released by the anterior pituitary. It stimulates the liver to secrete insulin-like growth factor. So then you have the two hormones working synergistically together. They stimulate growth the epiphyseal plates of your bones, your muscles, and by telling cells to do mitosis, and they give you the energy to grow by stimulating the liver and the adipose to release stored nutrients, which is the diabetogenic effect. Growth hormone varies. It is definitely not a steady level. So there are four main factors that determine how much growth hormone you have. The first one is age. This is pretty obvious. Kids grow. Adults are done growing. Remember in chapter 7 you learned that the epiphyseal plate closes at the end of puberty and you don't grow anymore. So here you can see it's very high in children and then it drops. Once you get to be an adult, your growth hormone level drops with age. So it is highest in children because children grow. The other factor is time of the day. When kids do grow, they do so at night while they're sleeping. So this is a trick you can use for you parents to get your kids to go to bed, is they have to go to bed in order to grow. I would always tell that to my kids. If you don't go to bed, you won't grow. So growth hormone is highest in the evening. Just before bed, you get a burst of growth hormone. and then you can grow while you're sleeping. Another factor is your blood nutrient levels. This is something else I used to always tell my kids. If you have high glucose, this will reduce your growth hormone. So having lots of soda and candy and all that sugar reduces the amount of growth hormone you have and can kind of stunt your growth. On the other hand, if you have high amino acids, so you're eating lots of protein, that will raise your growth hormone. So eating good healthy foods raises the amount of growth hormone. The fourth one is stress. So this can go either way depending on the stress. If you have stress like in the form of exercise, kind of mild stress, that will increase growth hormone. So again, kids getting out and running around and playing outside, getting some exercise can increase the growth hormone. However, if it's bad stress, like trauma, like a parent dies or kids who are abused or neglected, who have really bad stress, that will decrease growth hormone and can stunt growth. And you especially see this in abused and neglected kids can have stunted growth. There are other factors too that can cause extremes in the amount of growth hormone. So here you can see we have hyposecretion of growth hormone results in dwarfism. And here is the current shortest person in the world, two feet, 5.37 inches. Or you can have hypersecretion of growth hormone where your pituitary gland secretes way too much and that results in gigantism. Here is the current tallest person in the world at eight foot one inch. So these are both conditions 
in which you have extremes in the amount of growth hormone. The world record for the tallest person ever is Robert Wadlow. He is from Alton, Illinois. And he lived in the early 1900s and he had gigantism. So his pituitary gland secreted too much growth hormone. And he grew to be almost nine feet tall. Not quite, but almost. Here's an interesting little video that tells some more about Robert Wadlow. Robert Wadlow holds the record for being the tallest person to have ever lived, being an outstanding 8 feet 11.1 inches. Robert was born on February 22, 1918, in Alton, Illinois. He weighed a normal 6 pounds 8 ounces when he was born. Nobody assumed anything out of the ordinary. That is, until he reached 6 months and weighed 30 pounds, which is more than double the average weight of a 6-month-old. Throughout his life, Robert would continue to grow at an outstanding rate due to a condition known as hyperplasia which caused the cells in his body to constantly multiply to keep him growing and growing fast by his first birthday robert was three feet five inches tall weighing 45 pounds at 11 months old he was already walking by the age of five robert was taller than his own mother at five feet seven inches he weighed in at 105 pounds by the age of 13 robert was an astonishing seven feet four inches and weighed in at 301 pounds. At the age of 13, he gained the record for being the world's tallest Boy Scout, one he still holds to this day. By the age of 18, Robert was eight feet four inches, weighing in at almost 400 pounds. At the time of his death and only 22 years of age, Robert was standing at a towering eight feet 11.1 inches, weighing in at 440 pounds. His title has yet to have been beat in over 70 years. If you were to compare him to what is roughly the average height for an Asian elephant, about 8 feet 2 inches, not only is he taller, but he towers over it. With all that said, his tremendous height did not come without complications. He had to endure a lot of physical pain simply walking around. His clothing required three times the normal amount of cloth, and he had to have custom-made size 37 shoes. Each pair cost around one hundred dollars in the 1930s. That's about seventeen hundred dollars in today's money. Robert's father even had to make him a specially modified vehicle just so Robert could fit in it, having him use the whole driver's side of the car. Robert himself always had the dream of becoming a lawyer, and his favorite hobby was film. Sadly though, he would die at the young age of 22, due to a septic blister that formed on his leg because of a poorly fitted ankle brace, only a week after getting it. When he died, Died on July 15, 1940. He was so tall that they had to give him two plots in the cemetery. He was so tall, in fact, that he still maintains about a two-inch margin over the second tallest person to ever live, John Rogan, and a seven-inch margin over the current tallest person alive, Swelton Kusin. So Robert died in 1940 from a septic blister. That was before we had antibiotics. Antibiotics came out in the mid 1940s. Because he was so tall, he had to wear metal braces to help support his legs. And the metal brace made a sore on his leg or on his ankle. And that sore got infected and he died of the infection. Today, if you get a sore from a brace or from your shoe, you just put some antibiotic ointment on it and you're fine. But no antibiotics yet in 1940. Another situation that can happen with growth hormone is acromegaly. This is also an extreme of too much growth hormone. The difference here between this and gigantism is that it occurs as an adult after puberty is over. So remember with Robert, he was tall as a child. So gigantism 
is when a child has excess growth hormone. Acromegaly is when an adult has excess growth hormone. Think about what you learned in chapter seven in the bones. Kids have epiphyseal plates, adults have epiphyseal lines. So Robert grew so tall because this happened as a child when he had an epiphyseal plate, so he was able to grow taller. After puberty, your epiphyseal plates grow close, so you have an epiphyseal line. So you can't get taller. Instead, the bones get wider. The good news is that we do have medical treatment today. So Robert Wadlow ended up dying young as a kind of a side effect of his condition, but today we do have surgery. To this excess growth hormone tends to be caused by a tumor in the pituitary. And today we have medical treatment for this. So Robert's record still holds and it will probably continue to hold because today when kids get this condition, they're able to get treatment for it so that they don't grow to be nine feet tall and have all the pain and problems that Robert had.